Grace, peace, and love, family. Welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and at the end of verse 5, for without me ye can do nothing. Now think about this for a second, family. Think about how you woke up this morning. Think about how all of your body parts is functioning. Think about how you existing right now. You can't do that without God. All right, so we better give all praise, honor, and glory to the one that created us and the one that's allowing us to exist. So now let's open up this Bible study with Proverbs 2. And let's take a look at verses 1 through 11. It says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah. If thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou searchest or if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Thou shalt then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on back in, family. And I just want to say this uh, video might be uh, uploaded a little late. We had a busy day today. But nevertheless, I really truly praise God for him allowing us to be able to sit down and read about what thus said the Lord. So what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired me to do. And that is the secret things belong to God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children. So what we're going to have a look at throughout the course of this Bible study is that, in fact, you know, wisdom and knowledge from God, it, it comes from him. You can't purchase this like we was looking at Simon uh, uh, yesterday, Simon the sorcerer over there in Acts 8. He thought that he can purchase the Holy Ghost with physical money. The Holy Ghost is given to those that obey God. So to the humble, to the ones that's going to listen to what thus saith the Lord and conform to everything that he's saying. And this is why God is blessing us to be able to hear and understand his voice, because he has called us. He already knew who we were going, who we were going to be before we got here. He created every last one of us. So if we can hear what thus saith the Lord and we apply this. We are truly some blessed individuals. Blessed are our eyes for they see and blessed are our ears for they hear. We can hear God talking to us throughout the word. And while we meditate on the word throughout the day, he put he constantly giving us things. It's like we sitting at the table eating with him. So let's go over here and take a look at this. Luke 12. It's nothing like reading the word of God and actually applying it. I didn't work all day today. But I'd rather be here doing this. I couldn't wait to get back home and read what thus said the Lord with the family. So let's take a look at this. Luke 12. And let's take a look at verses 2 through 3. And this is coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Look at what he said. He says there, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. So one day God is going to reveal everything, every secret thing. You know, it'll be funny, you know. We didn't lost a lot of things, you know, wouldn't it be something? But, you know, God bring it back to your members like, yeah, you remember when you lost this over here? Here, I'm going to give you this over here. I'm going to give you this. But this is going to be better. God is amazing. He restores and heals. Let's continue. It says 
Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. So there's nothing, once again, that will be hidden from us. God is going to make everything known. As a matter of fact, this is the most important thing that he's going to make known. Let's go and take a look at this over here in uh, Isaiah 11. Let's see what's happening when the Lord Jesus Christ make his return and set up his kingdom on this earth, which is what we striving to be citizens of. So let's take a look at this. Just want this one verse. This is uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 11. And let's take a look at Isaiah 11 and verse 9. It says, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So when the Lord set up his kingdom here on the earth, everybody going to know about the Lord. Everybody going to know who he is. So there will be nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Everything is going to be made known, especially this knowledge that the Lord has for us. Let's go and take a look at something else. This is where the inspiration of the Bible study came from. The Lord was putting this on my mind. So let's take a look at this in Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29, and let's see this here. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29. It says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. So things that we don't know about, things that we are unsure of, that belongs to God. And this is why we pray and ask God for wisdom on what's going on when certain things are not going the way we expected it. Okay. It says, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. But backing up to the secret things belong to the Lord our God. The Lord was saying, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons when he was going to return. But it was given unto the father. The father knows exactly. So certain things we are just not ready for. And certain things just certainly they haven't been revealed to us yet. If anybody telling you they know everything in the Bible, they lying to you. Because all every last one of us is seeing through a glass darkly, dimly lit. When the Lord show us some, some things, he don't show us everything right away. That's just, this is even why we got to search the Bible. Because... The Bible is not written in chronological order. You got to go here a little and there a little. So the Lord is making us search like we opened up the Bible study with in Proverbs 2. So it says the secret secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. So God is revealing to us what he is requiring of us and how we need to be serving him this is what he's doing this is why he's showing us all of this information and giving us this wisdom because he wants you to serve him with a perfect heart and when you serve the lord you got to know something about him you got to know how to worship him how would you know how to worship him unless you read the bible you gotta read we we all have to read and not just here together even read on your own. This is what we promote on this channel. Reading on your own and repenting and turning back to God. Okay? So it says, these things are revealed unto us so that we can be obedient unto God always. All right? Let's go and take a look at this again. Let's go over here and look at Daniel. Let's go and look at the prophet Daniel because Daniel was among the ones that Nebuchadnezzar took into captivity when he sacked Jerusalem. So let's go and take a look at this over here in Daniel 2. Because King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he couldn't remember the dream. And he was getting upset with the uh, Chaldeans and astrologers and the wise men. And he said he was going to kill every last one of them unless they made the interpretation known. So the Chaldeans, just to, you know, sum it up, they went back and forth and was saying, you know, give us some more time because we're going to figure it out. But this was boiling <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar's uh, blood. It was making him upset. So we're going to take a look at how the man of God, the prophet Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, 
they went and sought the Lord and the Lord revealed the secret or the dream unto King Nebuchadnezzar. So things can be revealed if you ask the one who can, who has all knowledge. God can reveal it to you. You know, so if you ever in the dark about anything, don't go and consult no soothsayers or no witches or go and pull no tarot cards. Humble yourself and ask God because God speaks to us every single day. He's speaking to us. We just got to pay attention. Tune out those distractions. And you'll see God speaking to you clearly. Pay attention. Let's go and take a look at this. This is Daniel 2 and let's read verses 1 through 3. Then we're going to skip around. Daniel 2. And it says... And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. So this, this dream was bothering him. He couldn't even sleep because of the things that he was seeing. All right, so let's continue. It says, then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. So another thing that we can look at from this is these so-called wise men and astrologers and these people who are working sorcery. Obviously, they don't have the answer to everything because we're going to see in a response that they clearly don't have the answer to everything. God is the only one who has the answer to all of our questions. And if you be patient and wait for him, he will give us an answer at the appointed time. It says, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream. And my spirit was troubled to know the dream. So this dream was really bothering King Nebuchadnezzar. All right. So let's skip down and see this dialogue between these people that he called in to interpret this dream for him. Let's look at verse seven. Just to save time, it says they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show the interpretation of it. So they was like, you know what? Tell us what the dream was. But Nebuchadnezzar was saying, I don't remember the dream. Now you keep playing with me. I'm going to cut y'all in pieces and make your house a dunghill if you don't reveal this secret to me. He says, but if you will not, well, no, verse eight, because he's seen that they was playing with him. Are we at verse eight? Yeah, let's look at verse eight. It says, the king answered and said, I know of a certainly that you will gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. He's like, look, you wasting time. You you trying to prolong this thing. Tell me what it is. And I don't I want to I want to know what it is right away. So he says, but if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. So he said, man, y'all trying to lie to me about something. Y'all trying to make up something. That ain't going to work because he remember what it is, but he just can't remember what it is, if that makes sense. He going to know what it is. He going to hear when he hear what the truth is about the dream. He going to know exactly what it is. Somebody trying to make up some lies. They're going to get their head cut off. But watch this. He says, therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. He lied. Yes, it is. Somebody that prays to the true and living God, the one that reveals secrets. But anyway, let's continue. It says, therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that acts such anything at any magician or astrologer or called in. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth. And there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. So he said, man, can a man on the earth show you what you dream, King Nebuchadnezzar? That's like if we have a dream and you asking somebody, man, tell me what I dreamed or else so let's continue it says for this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of babylon so he got upset because they couldn't understand or make up this interpretation come up with the answer but we're gonna take a look at some men of god that came up with the answer because they sought the lord See, when you're looking for certain things, sometimes the answer is among some people that you at least expect. That's why we can't be prejudiced. You can't be prejudiced. You can't be thinking that you know everything. You got to humble yourself. That's the only way you can learn. That's why I listen to everybody. I listen to the kids. I listen to the old people. 
women, men, and children. Listen to everybody. And if it don't make sense, you know, what's that saying? You chew out, uh, chew up the meat and spit out the bone. You filter it out. You take what's good. All right. So let's get down to verse 16. So this is Daniel, the prophet Daniel it says, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he wouldn't show the king the interpretation. So Daniel wanted some time to seek the Lord so that he can get the interpretation for King Nebuchadnezzar. Once again, we dealing with the subject of how the secret things belong to God. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the whole world at this time, couldn't even figure out this dream. The people that was working for Satan, the, the sorcerers, the astrologers, because all of that's witchcraft. They couldn't figure it out. But the true and living God could because he know everything. So let's continue. The Lord is glorious. He glorious in his wisdom. Let's continue. It says. Then Daniel went to his house and made the, the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, his companions. And that's the same Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. So that's what we need to do when we want to find out something. All the way down to, I don't know, is your spouse cheating on you? Ask the Lord. The Lord will certainly reveal it. Anything. Ask the Lord to reveal it. And that's one thing that the Lord will not do. He will not let you be lied to if you don't want to be lied to he's gonna always show you the truth just pay attention ask the lord if you don't know go to him he got all wisdom knowledge counsel and understanding let's continue this it says that they will desire the mercies of the god god of heaven concerning this secret that daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of babylon because nebuchadnezzar put out a decree that he was going to destroy all of the wise men in babylon and you know who the first one to die in movies? The black man or the black woman. Guess what Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Abednego was? Well, Azaria. Black. All right. So once again, they probably would have went first. So it says that they would desire mercies. All right. We read that. So verse 19. It says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. The Lord revealed the secret to Daniel in a dream. Why did he do this? Because he sought the Lord. Let's see what happened. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. So after God gave him an answer, he praised them and blessed them, which is what we need to do at all times. It says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the God forever and ever. Or blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. God know everything. It ain't nothing that you can hide from God. So that stuff that you thought you was getting away with, you wasn't getting away. You was getting by. God know exactly what you're doing. It says, verse 23. It says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou has now made known unto us the king's matter. So remember the astrologers and all of them, they were saying, can't a man on the planet give, he can't even figure that out. But the God of heaven can. So once again, we see that it was revealed to Daniel. All right. So now let's continue with this. Let's go over here to, uh, I don't know. Let's go to Daniel 12. And let's look at how over here in Daniel 12, the Lord was revealing some things to him about the last days and he couldn't understand it but god told him hey that's not for you to understand at this time go your way and stand in your lot you got everlasting life coming basically is what he told daniel he said you're gonna stand in your lot at the last day this man got eternal life coming but anyway daniel 12 and verses 5 through 9 it says then i daniel looked and beheld or behold there stood other two the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, 
how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So he was looking at visions of angels talking back and forth with each other. And they were talking about things or revealing things about the last days or the time of great tribulation, which is in the last days. It says, and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. So this is the great tribulation. But Daniel does not understand what's going on. Although he's recording it, he doesn't he doesn't understand because God didn't open up his understanding on this. It wasn't for him to understand. It says. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but understood not. Then said I, oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So he said, I'm listening to what's going on, but I don't know. I don't understand. Because it wasn't for him to understand. Now, let's continue. It says, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. So what Daniel was looking at was future prophecy. And this prophecy is yet to be fulfilled. So much for the Old Testament ain't no good. That's a lie. Let's skip down to verse. Uh, uh, let's skip down to verse. Well, we finished with that. We finished with that. So now let's 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 move on now. Just to show you that there were people in the Bible who heard visions or seen things, but they couldn't understand. As a matter of fact, let's look at this angel over here in Revelations 10. Revelations 10, let's take a look at verse 1. Just to show you, we don't know everything. That's why we gotta humble ourselves and wait for God to give us this wisdom. Because we don't have this on our own. Wisdom comes from fearing the Lord and being obedient unto him. This is what this is what we need to strive to perfect every single day. Let's strive to perfect having wisdom and fearing the Lord the way he told us to fear him. Let's do that every day. So once again. Revelations 10 and verse one, it says, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clove with the cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire i'm sorry i'm just picturing all of this that's that's amazing to see an angel that looked like this it says and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth so this angel is huge he got one foot in the sea and one foot on the earth it says, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. So these seven angels said something. But let's take a look at this. Verse 4. It says, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So a voice said, look, whatever those seven thunders said, don't write that down. You got everything else in the Bible, but you you don't got this. You don't have you don't know what what these seven angels uh, th uh, said or thunder. All right. Let's go and take a look at something else now because we about to wrap this up. Let's go over here to uh, what is it? First Corinthians 13. I believe that is first Corinthians 13. Well, I thank God for the Holy Ghost, because without the Holy Ghost, you don't have no understanding. You don't have no fear of the Lord. You ain't, you don't got nothing if you don't got the Holy Ghost. Let's take a look at this. If you don't have God and you know God and the Father, they got the Holy Ghost. They're the ones that dispatch it. Jesus is the one that dispatches it. And you know the Father put his stamp of approval on it. So let's take a look at this. 1 Corinthians 13. That's why when I speak, I, I never want to ever leave out the Father and Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit. I never want to lead them out. Because without them, we can't understand what thus saith the Lord. We operate differently when you got God's wisdom. And when you're applying it. 
Understanding is pleasant to your soul when you apply it. Just be patient and wait for the results. First Corinthians 13 and verse nine. Look at this. This is why I never claim to know everything or know nothing. At least I only know what God revealed to me. Other than that, I don't know nothing. That's why we only deal with what God revealed to me. I can't reveal. I can't deal with nothing that God ain't revealed to me. A lot of things are marinating, though. But things that I don't understand, I don't touch on that because I don't know. And I have no problem saying I don't know. I'm just a human being. God got all of the wisdom. So let's take a look at this. First Corinthians 13 and verse nine, it says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. So we only know a piece of the story. We don't know everything. That's why we got to humble ourselves. We all we constantly learning from this Bible every single day. Every time you look in the Bible, it seems like there's something new. Let's continue. It says, but when that which is perfect is come, which is Jesus, then that which is in part shall be done away. So once Jesus comes and reveals all knowledge to us about who he is, then the stuff that the stuff that we don't know, it'll be made manifest unto us. Is what Paul is saying. Verse 12, it says, for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now i know in part but then shall i know even as also i am known so he said we seeing through a glass darkly right now it's kind of obscure but the things that we do know we need to make sure we honing in on those skills we know that we need to be keeping god's commandments we know that we need to repent and be baptized in the name of jesus to have our sins washed away and so that we can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We also know that if we continue on this path that God has given us, we got eternal life coming. So we know we got a crown waiting for us. And we also know that we got this wicked devil, Satan, that's trying to keep us from that. He's constantly trying to drive a wedge between us and God. But ain't no peril, no sword, no persecution principalities no angels is going to separate us from the love of christ jesus so keep that in mind let's go let's continue looking at this let's look at first corinthians 4 since we're here let's see what paul said because paul actually was a very humble brother now let's take a look at this first corinthians 4 and let's take a look at verses 1 through 7 let's read this it says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So he said, if you're going to look at us at any kind of way and any kind of way, just know that we know what God has revealed unto us. And we are ministers of the word of God. We watching out. We taking care of God's business. He says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So guess what that means for us? We have to be faithful with the knowledge that God is revealing to us. This is why <laughs> the people that know the Bible, these pastors, that's, and, I, and I never want to, you know, bash nobody or do nothing like that. But let's face it. We got a lot of lying pastors around here. Some of these pastors know the truth and they, te they teach lies for money. That is the that is the most disgusting thing that you can do. How can you teach God's word for money? People out here poor ain't got nothing. And you running around here taking money from them, twisting up the word of God. Man, you you, you got a death wish. Ain't no way in the world you can do that. If you fear God, man, you would think twice about it. You wouldn't even think about that. But anyway, let's continue reading this word. So he says. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not mine own self. Let's see who going to judge him. He says, for I know nothing by myself. He said, I don't know nothing on my own unless the Lord revealed it to him. He says, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. The Lord is the one who justifies us all. And this is what Paul is saying. He says, therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. This is why we can't be passing judgment and casting judgment on people. That woman that used to be a whore out on the street, she could change her life. 
Your current situation is not what it's always going to be unless you choose to stay there. That's why we get this word of God. We get Jesus Christ in our life and we have a total transformation. We ain't walking in darkness no more. We walking in our integrity like we know God is watching us. Because he didn't gave us too much wisdom and understanding. You get to falling off and getting off into some folly. God to take all of that information from you. That's a that's why King David was saying, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Lord, I know I messed up, but don't take your spirit away from me. Man, we don't want that. So it says unto the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. So God going to reveal everything in due time. OK, it says. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. See, we all just regular men. That's why we don't go for no flattering titles and all of this stuff. We just regular men that know what thus said the Lord, men and women. And we ain't above that. It says that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Look, that pride thing, God hate pride. And since he hate pride, we should too. That's why we should master this. This thing that God told us about being meek and humble. Master that characteristic. A lot of us can be prideful in our own way, but you know what? When God pointed out to you, correct it. When somebody telling you something, you don't want to hear it. And it's coming from out of the Bible and it's coming from a place of love. You don't want to hear it. You know how dangerous it is to be rejecting God's wisdom. You know how dangerous it is to, to hear God's word and you ain't keeping it the way you supposed to. He said he that knew better was beat with many stripes. But the one that didn't know that he didn't know better. He going to be beat with few stripes. A beating is a beating. Don't don't get it twisted. But. When you would rather have less stripes, once you know better, you got to do better, fam. So it says, for who maketh thee to differ from another? Like, what make you different from me? He says, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? He said, what do you have that you didn't receive? Didn't you get it from somebody if you received it? Whatever knowledge you got, didn't you receive it from God? So how you going to boast yourself on the next man? Like, you going to stun on him because you know more. You need to be sharing the information. It says, now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as, dost thou, as if thou hast not received it? Like, what you glory? You got it from somebody. So just as sure as somebody gave it to you, somebody could take it away from you, too. You know who that somebody is? God. That's why we ain't supposed to be boastful and proud. Never. We ain't never supposed to do that. So now we're going to start wrapping it up. Let's back up a little bit. So if we know anything, it's only because the Lord revealed it to us. So thank God for the Father and Jesus Christ sending the Holy Spirit to give us understanding on what thus said the Lord. Because if we didn't understand what thus said the Lord, we would lose our mind. The word of God is what keep us balanced. It's a lot of evil in the world. As soon as you get in the word, you start letting this word just sit and dwell in your heart. Man, you got peace. Yeah, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God's co God, he comforting us with his direction, with his counsel, with his chastisement. It's comforting. Because at least you know you walk in the right path and you pleasing God. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 through 8. It says, in my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So Paul said, man, look, I wasn't trying to be no excellent orator. I'm telling y'all about what thus said the Lord, the way the Lord showed me. And I'm coming with the spirit and the power of the spirit, too. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Because the wisdom of men is futile compared to God's superior wisdom. It says, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, 
nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. You see what he said? The rulers of this world going to come to naught, family. Why is that? Because they following after Satan, the majority of them are. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. See, it's hidden from the world, but it's revealed unto those that's meek and accept what thus saith the Lord. It's how we know this. It says, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. This is what we supposed to be glorying in, the word of God. Glory in the fact that you know that if you do pass away, you're going to resurrect from that grave because you passed away holding on to the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your lifestyle was declaring that. Yeah, glory in that. It says, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So it was hidden from them. But the Lord revealed it unto us. And to our children so that we can be obedient to him. Let's skip down to 11 now. It says, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. How somebody going to tell you what's on your mind? Except you let them know what's on your mind. People who can't read your mind, only God can. So it says, now we have received not. No, 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 no. I got to read 11 again. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So this is why we need the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Because he is the one that translates this Bible for us. Without the Holy Spirit, we don't have no understanding. We don't have no eternal life coming. We don't have nothing. Because the Holy Spirit is what's leading us and guiding us in all truth. The blood of Jesus is what's covering us and washing away our sins. Let's continue looking at this. Verse 10. Let's look up at verse 10 now. It says, but God have revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. This is why we need the Holy Spirit to reveal things unto us. But somebody that's not spiritually minded can't understand what thus said the Lord. They can't even under they can't understand that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you got eternal life coming. They can't understand that. They don't see the benefit in keeping yourselves unspotted from the world. They can't see that because they too caught up in the world at this time. So it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So God is revealing all of this wisdom and knowledge unto us. It says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, this, we matching up the precepts. That's why we didn't went to so many different verses in the Bible. Because we comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. So a man that don't have faith in the word of God, all of these things that's written in the pages of this book is foolish to him. He can't understand it. He think it's fairy tale. He don't have no understanding about who the true and living God is. But yet and still he'll say, oh, some man just wrote that book. Dude, you don't even know what you're talking about, man. Without understanding so it says, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to interpret what thus saith the Lord. A person that don't have no understanding or no uh, don't have a heart to understand what thus saith the Lord and want to continue to be wicked, he ain't going to understand. Because he ain't even trying to. He or she ain't trying to. That individual don't care. So let's go and take a look at this one last thing. And this is what we need to be glorying in. The fact that the Lord has revealed his word unto us. And Jeremiah going to let us know. As a matter of fact, the Lord going to let us know. Jeremiah 9 and verses 23 through 24. And we'll let it rest right after this. It says, thus saith the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this. That he understandeth and knoweth me. So if you're going to glory or boast about anything, boast in the fact that you know who God is. Glory in that. 
All of that other stuff is vain. It says that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness. God is showing us loving kindness every single day. He's been showing us loving kindness from the foundation of the world. You know why? Because the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. He already knew we was going to be messed up because of sin. And he had a plan in place, a salvation plan in place through his blood, through the blood of the son of God, which is Jesus Christ. So, yeah, he exercised loving kindness, judgment. He going he gonna to give you what's right and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So if this is what makes God happy, let's do this. Let's act, let's, let's glory in this. All right, so with that being said, we're going to let it rest right there. Let's continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's go back to Exodus 34. Exodus 34, this is why it's so important for us to repent every day. Every day. We always need to repent. We always need to make sure we walk in in the spirit of Christ Jesus. Because if we not, that means we lack in our armor somewhere. Somewhere that armor ain't on. And right off the top, I know the helmet of salvation ain't on if you ain't thinking about the Lord. All right. So we need to keep that armor on, the whole armor, because Satan is looking to bite and devour any way that he can, family. This is so important. This is a spiritual battle we fighting. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness and spirits in high places, principalities. So this is uh, uh, Exodus 34, verse 6. It says, and the Lord passed before him or passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and to the fourth generation. So guess what? We all need to be repenting. We all been taught wrong. We all got probably then grew up in dysfunctional households. We all got trauma that we need to heal from. We need to cast all our cares on the Lord, repent, and actually walk in the newness of life through Christ Jesus, family. So with that being said, let's close this Bible study out with a prayer. So Heavenly Father, we just say thank you for waking us up this morning. We ask, Father God, for the forgiveness of our sins and for you to create within us, Lord, a heart that's going to serve you perfectly according to your will all of the days of our life so that we can be found worthy of your salvation when you appear in your kingdom. Father God, we pray on behalf of the body of Christ, the less fortunate, the fatherless, the widows, the wrongfully imprisoned, the ones that's sick and afflicted among us, the ones that's getting beat down by Satan, the devil. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you send your word from out of heaven and may you heal us and strengthen us and comfort us and be our God in our defense. And may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer in the almighty name of Jesus. With that being said, family, may the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. I love you all so much. And until next time, peace in the almighty name of Jesus.